Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. So in today's video we're going to be jumping onto the Walker Major GH40 milling machine where we're going to be carrying out a power feed upgrade to the table of the mill. So with that in mind let's jump straight into this and get you up to speed on what we're going to be doing. For this power feed upgrade then I'm actually going to be utilising a stepper motor and controller I put together for the Walco mini lathe so with the addition of the big lathe now in the workshop I don't really need that small power feeding facility on that lathe so I've took the components off and we're going to be using this to drive my table backwards and forwards so just to remind a few guys who didn't watch the video on this I'll leave a link up here in the description where you can see how I assembled this stepper motor and all the components I needed. But to give you a general overview, all I've got to do is turn it on and the stepper motor starts spinning and then at the turn of a knob I can increase and slow down the feed rate as needed. So that's the hardware that's going to be driving this thing backwards and forwards. Next thing we need to do now is actually work on the mill itself and add some features onto there to allow us to mount this onto the table. Before carrying out any machine work then, I need to get myself a template of the part that we hope to machine. So to do this I'm going to be taking off the end plate here on the milling machine and we're going to be using that as a reference with bolt holes and shaft alignment to basically get this thing to a point we can fit it onto the milling machine. With the end plate now off we head back over to the bench where we're going to be laying this out on a piece of 10mm steel. So just using a blue sharpie and scribing round it I can get quite accurately an outline of this and then just using some transfer punches we can transfer the holes across and just centre punch them. So after that it was down to the anvil and to start to cut this using an angle grinder. So normally on the channel I try to use a bandsaw just because it's a lot cleaner here in the workshop but this thick 10mm steel it just took ages to cut really from previous times using it. So using an angle grinder made light work of this and afterwards it just meant a little bit of clean up in the workshop. With all the cutting now done, we've got a rough outline of what our end plate is going to look like. And now it's time to do some machining to it. So just using an end mill here, we can get a rough outline and some references for this plate which is going to be mounting our stepper motor to which will be driving the lead screw of the milling machine. So with that bottom part done, it's now time just to machine these side bits down to the scribe lines that we marked out. So this was a fairly simple process of just working down until I got fairly close to those scribe lines. Once both of those sides were finished, it was time to move over to drilling this out. So the two outer holes here are going to be drilled to accept a brass bush, which we'll be fitting later on, and the centre hole is going to be what we're going to be fitting the stepper motor shaft through which will be driving the lead screw. So with that drilled we can test fit and the stepper motor seems to fit through that really nice other than a recess which we now have to take over to the lathe and machine out. So using a little bit of a primitive method here of using the tail stock to sort of line this up in the four jaw chuck I think that's going to be accurate enough for what we're doing. So don't get me wrong, there are methods to dial this in using a DTI or lever gauge, but for me, a simple method like this, quick and dirty, got the job done. So with all the jaws on the chuck all now tightened, we can now begin to machine that out until the stepper motor fits in there really nice. So after a few passes and going down a few mil, I got to a point where I felt the step motor was close to fitting. So took it off and tried a little test fit out. And just like that, 
the stepper motor now sits in there really nice and flush and the shaft of the motor protrudes through nicely so we can attach something onto that at a later stage. Moving on to the next components then which we need to get machined for this build and that's the brass bushes that are going to sit into that end plate and allow the movement back and forth of this stepper motor. So it's important that we get these machined from brass as we want these to be the things that wear out in the eventuality that something does. So brass is a good material for this. So once I've taken these down to one of the final outer diameters, I then need to drill and ream this to be a 10 millimeter hole, which is gonna slide nicely along our shafts. So drilling it out to a 9.5 then allows me to come in with 10 millimeter reamer and being brass, it's quite forgiving. From there, it was taking it down to the smaller outer diameter, which is going to be the press fit into our end plate. And once I was happy with that measurement, it was a case of put a slight chamfer on the end and part these off. So adding a little bit of thread lock on this is quite important for me, just because some of these I didn't quite hit the dimensions that you'll see as you can see with this first one it went in fairly easy so Loctite is going to be my best friend there and once that's cured off it'll be no different to us if it was an interference fit this second one seemed to go in a lot tighter and have a lot more resistance so that was a much better dimension that I hit there so once that was all cured off we could then just test fit our shafts through these just to see how they fit and would you look at that, a 10mm shaft fits nicely into the 10mm hole. Jumping back on the lathe then, we now need to carry out some machine work onto these 10mm rods. So to begin with, I'm going to start by facing this off and turning this down to be able to accept an M8 thread. So being 10mm to start with, I've turned these down to 7.9mm, which I've found in the past going about 0.1 to 0.2 millimetres below the outer diameter of a thread makes running a die down these things really easy. And being EN8 steel, this is quite a hard grade of high carbon steel, so we want a little bit of wiggle room there. Once I got down to that 7.9 millimetre, it was a case of just power feeding the die on. This big Harrison M300 lathe is really good at running dies down in power feed, and you've got a lot of control with the foot pedal so I have no problems running a die down and forming that thread onto the shaft. With that done and double checked with a nut running down I can happily say that thread is all finished and from here we can move over to the milling machine. So to be able to tighten these up without marring all the shaft up I want to be able to do these up using a spanner. So just by machining a couple of flat spots on here, this will allow me to use a spanner. So I'm only taking half a mil off this each time and we're going to be using a 9 mil spanner to do these up. I know, an unusual size but I didn't want to take too much material off of these. So a quick half mil pass on either side gets the job done and then from there we can test fit all the components and see how they fit. So with all the parts now assembled, I can finally give you guys the first look of how this thing is going to look and perform. So the idea behind this is I didn't want a power feed that was permanently engaged with the lead screw because when I wasn't using it, it would be a real pain to turn. So I've come up with this design. It's a bit stiff. Ooh, a bit stiff he says. This plate basically moves backwards and forwards on these guide pins. So when I don't want to use the power feed, I can simply slide that back and that will stay there in position. And when I want to use it, I can slide it forward and engage it. So I think this is a good place to stop in today's video. When we come back in the next one, I've got to basically drill and tap the holes to permanently attach the motor to the plate and then we've got to work on the coupling which is going to transmit the drive 
from the motor to the lead screw. But so far, things are looking pretty good.